Hey, it's Jake with Senkut Sand. Today, we're back talking about bending. More importantly, design considerations when you're planning your bends. So let's start by talking about the minimum flange length that you can have on this part. So what is the flange length? If we have our base flange and then the bent area on our part, the flange length is gonna be off the tangent of our base flange to the end of that bent area on the part. We're gonna call that FL right here on this drawing. So what's the best way to figure out the minimum flange length that you can have? It's to go to our website and look at the design guidelines for that material and the thickness. And that's gonna tell you that minimum flange length. Next, let's talk about the max flat dimension. This is gonna be referencing our max flange length. If we go to our website again, we're gonna see that we have a max flat dimension of 30 by 30. But what does that mean? What that means is that in the flattened out version of your part, A and B, neither one can be greater than 30 by 30 inches. Lastly, let's talk about the max bend length limits for your part. So as an example, 4130, if it's a quarter inch thick, we have a bend length of 16 inches. All the other materials are in our material guidelines on our website. Next, let's talk about how we measure bend angles, specifically when we're putting them into the website. If we want our part to have an acute bent 45 degree angle, uh, our included angle being 45, we're gonna be measuring this off the flat flange angle of the beginning. So on this part right here, we would have that flat angle and we would measure out 135 degrees. Let's look at the opposite of that. If we wanna have our part be an obtuse bend with 135 degree included angle, we're gonna actually be measuring off the flat here at 45 degrees. So if we're gonna to go to the website and we want an acute angle, we're gonna put in 135 degrees. If we want an obtuse angle, we would put in 45 degrees for these, for these bends. Next, let's look if we have a back-to-back -back bend situation such as a U-channel like this. More importantly, we wanna talk about the ratio between the base and the retur two return flanges. So if we don't have enough space, so if we have too long of a return flange, we can contact the punch in this corner as we're bending this one. So a safe return ratio is a two to one. We'll put that down here, two to one ratio. That being said, is if we have a base flange that is two inches, our maximum return flange angles, or flange lengths, are gonna be one inch. Lastly, let's talk about parallel lines. If we have a bend, say on a funky part like this one right here, that doesn't have any parallel lines with respect to the bend line, we have to add in a parallel line. And that's because we have that back gauge that we're gonna be referencing the part to to make sure that the depth and the angle of that bend is in the proper place for your part. So we need to add that in. So we're gonna go ahead and add in a flange that matches that contour. But this line right here, is now parallel to our bend line. We can do that and then just add in some tabs onto that flange that are the width of about 50% the material thickness, as well as having a slot in here that is about one times the material thickness. Once you get your parts in the mail and they're already bent, you'll see this tabbed in flange. You can go ahead and just cut them off and you have your finished part. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more.